Aarhus on what was only the most sadistic course ever created for cross country. It's probably certainly at a world cross level. But Annie Emily Muller has fantastic form at under 23 and under 20 level. And now she's up against the big guns at senior. And it'll be fascinating to watch how she fares the many titles at underage level. And this is the beauty of cross country running. It brings together steeple chasers, 1500 metre runners, marathon runners, 10,000 metre runners, but mountain runners, sky runners, triathletes, duathletes. Um, but there's only one winner from all those. And there is a, a slight precedent with regard to the proximity of a marathon prior to a European cross-country win. Helena Dvornik of Slovenia, when she won this title in 2002, she won the Florence Marathon two weeks beforehand in 2.28. The cream of European distance running talent to rise to the top. Away they go, a downhill start, and you can be sure that's a fast one, even if it is into the teeth of the wind as they run down the hill there. And it looks like Jess Judd using all that old 1500 meter and 800 meter speed from the track to get out in pole position. Marif Bata, as well, a very accomplished 1500 meter runner. I think she's run around 401, four minutes flat indeed. Marif Bata, so she's utilizing that to get pole position into this very tight first turn. Marif Bata has gone out within 10 now, as has Cluster Halpin right on her. And Cardamo as well, she's the NCA 10,000 metre champion from the summer there in Spain in the red t-shirt. Um, I'd expect her to feature today as well. They're all uh, navigating that first corner OK. Cluster Halpin straight to the front, and we haven't spoken about her too much, of course, but anyone who's followed Global Athletics in recent years, and indeed the events at under 18 and under 20 level, will know all about the 24-year-old German. She's done so much rising through the ranks really one of the stars of German athletics. She, in 2019, won World Championship bronze over 5,000 metres. This year, she was eighth in the Olympics over 10,000 metres, but she's had issues. She's had back and pelvic injuries this year. So we only really have that one race to go on in Forzheim, Germany, where she did beat Alina Ray and beat her well, although Ray did slip that day or suffer a fall, but she came home 30 seconds in front, and I think Foster Halfen is definitely setting her stall out early here that she is putting herself right in contention to the front end. Of course, Yasmin Chan keeping tabs on both of them back in third. Yasmin Chan and Carolina Grovdale, they had a kind of slower start, um, but then they did move through. You can already see Grovdale, slight bit of daylight between her and that top six that I don't think she'd be doing that lightly. I'm fairly sure her and Jessica Judd want to be in that front group. So you can all, Vanula McCormick up there in the top ten early, day, early doors as well. But they'll be keen not to let that front group of six open up any more of a gap. You don't want them, them to disappear off down the track. Certainly not, yeah. Any gaps at this early stage, it can be feel like a long way to try and close them in as the gaps start to open and the highest quality athletes start applying the pressure out front, but two Swedes up front at the moment, and I see that Mekta's wall do a France there. Mekki as her nickname, is better known. Um, uh, another transfer of allegiance from Eritrea. She's lived in France for many years now, and is indeed a, a proud part of the community there, and she coaches as well, does Mekta's, and she has a lot of good performances on the books. She was second at the French Cross Country Championship. She's won 70.50 for a half marathon, and she's run 31.47 um, for 10k on the road has Waldo and she's just slotted in there on the far left of your shot tracking the champion which is probably always a good approach at this level it's always a decent idea just to tuck yourself in behind the Aspen Chan you won't go far wrong at the European Cross Country Championships but that does seem to be a bit of a decisive group of six but to Ferry there of Israel, she's made that jump into that group as well. But to have uh, the second Swede, Mengstab, she got a bronze medal in Lisbon and she's put herself right there in contention. So two Swedes in the top six is very impressive. They're going to struggle for a third scorer, but you never know if you can score very few with your first two, that might get you a team medal. Who knows what would be being shouted at the third and fourth Swedish athletes as they're going around about where the first two are and their bid for we can see the two third and fourth Swedish athletes there look like they're in about 40th position or so that's an absolutely wild estimate based on my eyes which could be betraying me big time but up front we have six athletes pulling away and for the first time really Yasmin Chan looks to be starting to crank a little bit of pressure up towards the front there we've got one of the short laps done we're going to run one more of these these are kilometer laps and then we'll go out for the long laps. Three long laps will follow. Sorry, four long laps will follow. So is this pace, so this first six, is that is that too much for the rest of the field or have they got this exactly right? Grovdell is so experienced, as is Mola, as is Judd. 
have they got this right? And they're going to close that gap. Maybe not all the way to the front, but perhaps they think there's a few women in that front pack that have gone too hard and they will close them up. Yeah, and our group of six is now down to five already because Mekdes Waldo has just fallen off or I guess perhaps could be backing off. Maybe she's just finding this pace and the wisdom, I suppose. Maybe she's just thinking, I don't want to have the 29-year-old thinking, I don't want to get too deep in the red zone too early in this race as we see the wisdom. Talking of wise athletes, Fanula McCormick, her 17th appearance at the Spar European Cross Country Championship. Championships. No woman has ever appeared at this championships as much as her. Sergei Lebed on the men's side has 19 appearances, but I'm sure Fanula will be thinking she can get beat that in the years ahead. And she is uh, already positioning herself to attack those top 10 places, which would be a, a brilliant result seven days after running a 2.23 marathon. But up front, five athletes look like they're breaking clear, and this could be the race for the medals playing out in front of our eyes very early in this race, although I'm sure... Gravdal back in sixth and Anna Emily Muller and Mechtel Boulder will have ideas on picking up the pieces if any of these athletes come back to them. Absolutely, and Teferi's running well there as well. She made the final of that Olympics uh, over 5,000 metres, ran great the European Team Cup and the 10,000, I think that was her this year, along with Jess Judd and, and Adish McCoughlin. So she's she's doing very well there. It was great to see those um, under-20 Israeli men get a bronze medal in the team championship. So they're having a great weekend. Uh, but could... could to, to Ferdy of Israel, sat there in fifth place, be adding another medal for her team today. Yeah, she's a very progressive athlete. She was 10th in the Olympic 5,000 metre final this year. She ran 31.19 for 10K. And um, she emigrated from Ethiopia to Israel back in 2017. And her husband, Maru, is a very good runner as well. He was 13th in the Olympic marathon for Israel. And I'm sure if he's, if he's not here on the course, which I suspect he is, I'm sure he's cheering her along from home and hoping for a European medal for Selamowit Teferi. So we're coming up. That's the short laps out of the way. That's 2K of running in the books. And now it starts getting difficult because we have four long 1500 meter laps and 6K of running. And to be honest, it's already got difficult. You can see this group splintered, ap splintered apart here. And we'll have a check on the team standings because things are already, unlike the men's race, things are already getting very much organised into perhaps what might be some of the finishing positions. We see Jess Judd there chasing Grobdal in that battle for fifth and sixth. Fanula McCormick leading Anna Muller. That's the battle for sixth and seventh that Grobdal and Judd are currently in. But too early to call finishing positions really because so, so much could change. Lena Ray there, she's so much success in the age group ranks and that great bronze silver medal, maybe a silver silver medal in Berlin in the uh, 10,000 metres. She really moved herself up into those senior ranks. She's having a great run in that group. If that group can keep working together, um, I think they could run really well and pick up and pick off anybody that's gone off too hard. It's great to see Grovda make that commitment to get back towards that front group and Jess Judd trying to go with her. Uh, but that really should, maybe, maybe Grovda need, needed two kilometres to warm up uh, before she could get back get back involved with medals. Absolutely. She's been around the block at this championship so many times, the 31-year-old Norwegian. She knows how this works. She knows there's no medals handed out after the first 2K, and I think she's very sensibly paced her opening effort here and now is just starting to rejoin it. Parts of this course, I'm sure, for an athlete with a cross-country skiing background will feel like she's shifting through the mud, I suppose, in the highlands of Norway. And now Grovdal... The wily Norwegian athlete has rejoined and I'm sure as she was warming up she took a glance over and saw that Norway had taken gold via Jakob Bingerbrigsen in the men's race and she will be very keen to make it a double here. Sitting quietly, a very sensible place she's taken up. They ran down into the wind there and she benefited from the slipstream of all of them there. And it's Yasmin Chan who's been given the hard task to do all the running out front but we've seen so many times in the past Chan is more than capable of doing it all on her own. And that's always her style, isn't it? She's always at the front, piling on the pressure, whittling down that field until she's on her own. And we saw Iris Kaya try to do that in the men's race, and he, and he did. He did it very well to get rid of everybody apart from Jakob Ingebrigtsen. Uh, but Yasmin Chan, you do think it's, it's a hard tactic to do that, to, to take all that pressure of leading, uh, especially on a windy day like today. And uh, that's, a big, that's a big pack. On, and you can see Jessica Judd made her way back onto the back of that pack as well. So they're not going that fast. It's not that hard so far. As you see, Marif Barter, maybe she thinks this is a little bit slow. I don't want this group to get any bigger. 
Absolutely, yeah. Well done to Jess Judd there, just using that little lull in pace to get back in contact. It's such a, both a physical and a psychological lift, I suppose, during the, the 159 challenge with Eli Kipchoge, all runners around the world learned a lot about aerodynamics, but a lot of the benefit of being able to establish contact with an athlete is as much psychological as it is physical and being able to just switch off mentally and just make that your goal to just stick with these athletes and pass time whereas when you're doing it all on your own uphill into the wind as they'll soon be going it can be very very difficult but Jess Judd has re-established contact with the Israeli athlete Dare to Ferry and is just off the main pack at the moment if she could just get up to them it would make the next two or three kilometers a lot easier but it looks like five athletes are still not letting this pace slip at all out front and Bata chief among them is making sure this is going to be a true true te cross-country test it's almost heartbreaking for, for Jess Judge. She was just making contact, and then Meredith Barter decided to make a move. That's the worst thing when you just think you've got back on the group. It, that'd probably be hard for, for Caroline Grovedale as well. She would have made that effort to bridge that gap and would have gone, I'd fancy, two or three minutes settling here, gathering. Uh, but Meredith Barter, maybe someone told her from the sidelines, put in a kick now, and that will dishearten some of your competitors. Yeah, and looking back behind that group, that's Jenny Nesbitt in ninth place, the leading Britain. Fanula McCormack is in tenth there. Um, so they're running very well as well and like we said who knows who will fall apart from this leading group and a lot of those athletes might be able to pick up the pieces let's look back battle for team medals a lot of the there's Anna Emily Muller she's not going to be in the contention for medals but it's great to see her back at a European cross country and let's hope her injury problems are in the past and we see her brilliance shine because she truly is a brilliant cross country runner as we see the Flanagan twins there leading the pack for Ireland the athletes who are based over at the state in Colorado I think one of them has since relocated home and uh, Ailish went to the Olympics and ran well there in the heats of the steeplechase for Ireland, but they'll be trying to get up there and get the Irish team in contention. The battle up front, it's Sweden, it's Norway, it's Germany, and big news at Yasmin Chan. Is this lights out or is this just a, a dark patch for the four-time consecutive champion? She looks to be struggling big time. She has really, really significantly dropped her pace there. We saw your man Kripa step off. He was in contention for a medal and he couldn't finish the race. Yasmin Chan, she's still in the race. You can see her there. She's been overtaken by Lena Ray, but she cannot live with the pressure that Marif Barta is, asked, is putting on. She can't answer the questions the Swede is asking. And that is a shock. We did wonder when we'd see Yasmin Chan finally beating it, beaten at a European Cross Country Championships. All those titles back to back. She was hoping for a fifth successive gold today, uh, but it looks like we will have a new senior women's cross country champion today. Certainly, I don't think Yasmin Chan, as classy and happy as she is, would ever allow this to happen unless she was in very deep distress. And while we may sometimes see this in marathons and half marathons, perhaps with athletes losing ground like that in a 8K cross country race on good terrain like this, I think that is a margin that is never going to be made up again unless something went amiss with her spikes but it looks like it's not so much any technical issue and probably more fitness issue we wondered after that race in Seville last month was Yadamin Chan in her best form having beaten beaten by 90 seconds by some a group of Kenyans and Ethiopians and it looks like she's not at her brilliant best today and we may be crowning a new champion for the first time since 2015 then the title might not be going back to Turkey well, Cluster Half, and she's a two-time junior champion, one of the few women to have won two junior titles. I think it's Steph Twell and Nadia Batacletti. Maybe Charlotte Clergy, but I'm not sure. But so good in those age group ranks, as was Alina Ray, her teammate there, who's running a fantastic race, a little bit isolated. Uh, but it'd be great to see her get up in that top five, top six. But Constanza Costa Health, and this is a new challenge for her. She got that fantastic bronze medal um, at the 2019 World Championships. That's, that was phenomenal, really great running. Uh, but she's had a new challenge today with this cross country and uh, being up against the likes of Carolyn Grovdale and Meredith Barter that already have senior European cross-country medals um, is a fantastic fantastic race really for spectators and for the athletes as well I'm sure they're enjoying this battle yeah certainly Constance Cluster Health is certainly imposing herself here and speaking of cross-country mentors and coaches and brilliant cross-country athletes she's been mentored and hanging out for the last few weeks with Sonia O'Sullivan the assistant coach with Pete Julian's group over there in Oregon where Cluster Halfen has been based for the last couple of years. She spent time in Germany of late and then she spent time at Teddington in England training for the last couple of weeks in preparation for this. 
and um, she is looking very much a contender here for gold. Kloster Health, and I remember talking to her, she comes from Koenigswinter in Germany and talking to her a couple of years. I asked her, what's the area like where you grew up in? She said, it's a lot of hills and a lot of cows. It's good for cross country. So there's many a cow in the nearby fields here and there's a like few steep hills on this course here in Abbottstown and Constance Kloster Health, and just like what she grew up on. I said, it does sound, this sounds slightly Irish, but uh, I'd say... Uh, Cluster House and will be very at home on this terrain. And look at Alina Ray as well. She is moving through the field, picking people off, as is Jessica Judd. I think Jess Judd there in fourth, Alina Ray in fifth. Uh, that's some fantastic team points. You can see Germany with those first two. I think they'll struggle for a third runner. Uh, Britain will pack well. Look, Jenny Nesbitt there in their second scorer. Uh, Sweden as well. They've got two right up there, but when will they find a third runner? But Jessica Judd working really hard to try and get back into contention with those first three. Yeah, it'll be very interesting to see how this plays out. It looks like we have three pulling away for the medals, but Jess Judd has worked so hard, and Alina Ray, they've paced their efforts so well, the Britain and the German, and they're just coming through stronger and stronger. They look like they're, they're going to be able to pick up the pieces here if they can just re-establish contact with the lead three. You would fancy their chances at a medal because they have paced it very well. But, I mean, these three out front, these are three of the four we expected to feature right up the front. It is Constance Klosterhalfen, it is Marath Bata, and it is Caroline Björki Grovdal. They are pulling clear. They've probably got about a five to six second advantage at the moment over Jess Judd and indeed Alina Ray, who has that European under-23 title. She beat Klosterhalfen to that title that day. It was a, a freezing cold day in Slovakia. I remember them both shivering in the mix zone moments after running a six-kilometre race. It spoke to how cold it was that day. It's a little bit more comfortable, thankfully, today. And these athletes are putting on a brilliant demonstration of cross-country running. I can't, I can't see any of these top three having judged this wrong. They're such experienced runners. They're so good at pacing themselves. I'd be very surprised uh, if any of this top three have misjudged this and, and opened the door for Alina Ray or Jessica Judd. But... Yeah, we saw, I never, never would have thought I'd see your man Gripper uh, have to withdraw himself from a race. He's such a ferocious competitor, I wouldn't have expected that. Uh, so it's not over till it's over, and they've got two laps left to go. They still have another 3,000 metres to run, I think. Not just two laps, not three laps. I think they've only got two laps to go. Yeah, we're getting confused with all these short laps and long laps, <laughs> but we'll update you. Either way, the medal race appears to be boiling down to three athletes between Klosterhalf and Bata and Grovdal. All brilliant athletes over 1,500 metres and even 800 metres, some of them. So we, it'll be interesting to see how it compares. Con two laps to go here as they come up. It, Constance Klosterhalf a few years ago ran sub two minutes for 800, so she has excellent speed. Grovdal, obviously, better known as a steeplechaser on the track but she's brilliant strength as well. She's a 9.13 steeplechaser, which is a truly, truly world-class time. 14.43 for 5K, 30.32 for 10K on the road, the Norwegian record. Gravdal is a superbly strong athlete, but she will want to make this a test early because she knows that Klosterhelfen and indeed Bata have excellent 1500 meter speed. Bata has a four minute flat runner. But she looks like she might be struggling. Or maybe it's just a bit of uneven terrain there, but she of the three, she looks like she's probably hurting the most as Bata at the moment. She does a little bit. I think uh, Bata often does this in races for me. She has a couple of rough patches and she might come back through, but she does look like she's struggling. And it might be the pace is lifting ever so slightly. Mark Butler's brought, brought my attention to art. We've got a screen here that tells us the times. And that was the fastest lap split of the race. Uh, Caroline Grovdale, she did a fast lap to get herself back in contention, but they're running sort of 5.05 for 1500 metre laps over this terrain, which is just a messy around but that might be why that's starting to to hurt Mary Farter a little bit but I think she'll gather I think she'll dig in she's a she's a ferocious competitor well, the top five are all between 505 and 508 for the la last lap and then the next uh, fastest 520 so they really are separating them from the themselves from the pack it's certainly that point of the race it's the a really deep distress we're approaching as I said past the five kilometer mark now and if you if you're not the big kicker this is the point of the race where you want to move and at times in the past Caroline Björkeli Grovdal 
She's such a strong athlete and she could run anyone in, out there into the ground, but at times she doesn't have the fastest kick. And if you're Gravdal at the moment, Hannah, are you thinking I need to put pressure on here this lap or perhaps it could be another bronze? Yeah, Gravdal has to. She absolutely has to put her foot down. She's been moving even longer in the distances as she's moved through her career. Um, it's been great to see her on cross country, steeplechase, 5,000, 10,000, uh, but she certainly can't boast the, the speed that the women behind her have. Costa Halfen and Barter have sub four, four flat, sub two, 800 meter runners. Uh, and Grovdale will know that. She's a very canny, very smart racer, uh, but she has to open up a gap on them if she's going to beat either of those. But sometimes you get surprised by the uh, the strength kick. Just a quick look at the team scores. Great Britain there in the lead, 26 points. Sweden in third and Germany at the moment in second. Uh, but there's not much in it and they have got uh, they have got another lap left to go so we, that could change yet and it looks like cluster health is hurting we mentioned about someone's going to need to attack to run that 358 1500 meter speed out of her legs and it looks like it's happening here and this is the key zone for constanza cluster health and she has to maintain contact over this next kilometer or that gold medal will be gone into the distance if she can do that it's very much within striking distance with the way she can finish and we see jess judd and alina ray coming up from behind there they look like they're going to catch up the cluster health very quickly and it looks like this may now be a two-woman battle battle for the gold between Marath Bata and Caroline Björkeli Grovdal. Can Grovdal finally get that gold that has so long eluded her at senior level? It would be fantastic to see uh, Grovdal pull off this goal. I feel she started that move. She made the first move, Marath Bata responded and those two in combination were just too much for Kloster Halfen. And I just hope, can she hold her head now? That's a really tough thing to do, to be in contention for a win. Um, and then I imagine it would probably happen quite suddenly. Uh, you suddenly be overwhelmed with fatigue. Um, and now she's in no man's land on her own. And Alina Ray knows all about hunting down, uh, hunting down runners in cross country races and kicking for medals, as does Jessica Judd. If those two work together um, and can get themselves back up to Costa Halfen, I think we could see Costa Halfen out of the medals today. Yeah, it's always a sign of deep distress. Cluster Helfendere took a look around her shoulder to see who was coming from behind, as Jimmy Gressier did earlier about this stage of the men's race. But Jimmy Gressier held on for bronze. Can Constance Cluster Helfen do the same? She is an athlete of absolute resolute will, and she will give it all her all. But being tracked down from behind in that battle for bronze is her teammate, Alina Ray. She beat, Ray beat her at the European Under-23 Cross Country Championships four years ago, but... Constance Klosterhalfen put 30 seconds into her at the German trials just a few weeks ago but the roles are very much reversed here and they're back together again in that battle for bronze along with Britain's Jess Judd and it would be a remarkable performance from Judd who was 17th in the Olympic 10,000 metres in Tokyo this year to get on the podium here and to win a medal at this level. Hey, Jess is bounced back really well from that Olympic game. She won the British trial by some distance and a great 10k on the roads uh, before that as well. Um, so it's great to see Jess running well over cross country at the senior level, sixth in Lisbon. So she's she's on for improving that. But these two, Grovdale and Barta, I feel they're just throwing punches at each other. If they were in a track race or a road race, you say maybe they're sharing this pacing, maybe they're trying to get a good time. But in cross country, no, I think they're testing each other out. Every 400 meters, they're saying, well, I can kick again, can you? And it seems like the answer every time is yes. But when they hear the bell, it was Grovdale in the lead this time. But Barta is right there, sticking to her like glue. And I think she'll have another go at trying to get past Grovdale. And this is going to be a fantastic last lap. Brilliant. These two athletes have traded blows so many times. Grovdale 31, Barta 32. They've been fixtures on the European scene for so long and what a race they're serving up here as the finale to a wonderful day here at the Spar European Cross Country Championships in Fingal, Dublin. Grovdal, you get the impression she's sick of bronze medals. As brilliant as achievements as a bronze medal is at this level, she won them in this race between 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018. She's won bronzes on the track at the European level over 10k in the steeplechase back in 2018. She's won silver before, but she's never won a European gold at senior level here and this is his better chance, best a chance just she'll ever get. And you get the impression, Hannah, that she's just very conscious of the speed of Marath Bata and if she's going to do this, it has to be done in the next 800 metres or so. I think you're right. I think she really will want to, to keep it, keep the pressure on. Maybe we'll see her use the technical parts of the course. We've seen some of the other winners do that so well, come through that muddy corner and kick off. Uh, Barter doesn't look as comfortable on the mud as Grovdale does, so maybe Grovdale will use that to her advantage. Whether she knows that or not, I'm not sure, but she is very comfortable on the slippy, muddy conditions. 
She's driving hard now. There's a couple of little kicks, a couple of little hills that she can use to put the pain on Merrick Barter. And for the first time, I think that is a slight gap between Grogdell and Barter. But she's looking back and you don't want to do that. You do not want to give Merrick Barter any hope here. Mary Farta can stay in contention. She will use all of her track speed to the best of her ability. Absolutely. If this is going to be done, Gravdal has got to do it now. And you can see the pain on both these athletes' faces. They're inside the final kilometre now. They have absolutely gone to the well here. Everything they have. There's so much on the line. This will be a race they can look back on with such pride for the rest of their careers, the rest of their lives, if they can do it. We check in on the team event. It's Britain from Germany, from Sweden. We'll see how that plays out towards the end. But at the moment, we'll look at the individual battle for gold and Kravdal 7k into this race she is in deep distress but so is Bata behind her and if you're Kravdal you just have to take spirit from the fact that you've put five six meters into her try and turn it into eight meters ten meters if you're Bata you're just thinking I have to hang in I have to get up this little short incline if I can do it I can use my 1500 meter speed to out kick her if you don't it's game over because Kravdal is not going to slow down between now and the finish I think this hill is going to be decisive I think Kravdal's got the bit between her teeth we've seen her this fatigue she's always this fatigue she always gives everything at the european cross-country championships i think if she can open up another meter like you say eight meters nine meters ten meters barter she's rocking and rolling she does not like this mud as much as grovdell i think this could be grovdell coming home for her first senior medal but it's too soon to say that it is she takes a look behind grovdell she puts that head down the way her compatriot jakob Brixen did earlier but this time the difference is there's no one in front of her Bata does the exact same. A lot of coaches will tell you, try and lean into the hill to just get up it when you're struggling. Short and destroyed and try and save your legs a little and put the pressure on your heart and your lungs. And the one thing we know about Caroline Björkeli Grovdal, she has oceans of heart in her running all down through the years. Ever since she won that European under 20 title in 2009 in Dublin, she's looking around her a lot though, Hannah. She is, but it might be she might be racing smart. She might be thinking, you know, do I do I go now and try and try and ruin Barter's spirit, which I think she really did up that hill there. But for Caroline Brogdale, if she gets this senior title, like you say, back in Ireland after her junior title, this would be such a phenomenal story. Merrith Barter working really hard. I think Alina Ray is up into that bronze medal position. She's closing slightly on Merrith Barter, but I think she'll run out of ground. But Caroline Grovdale just powering away, getting herself up to some lap runners. That's exactly what you want at this stage of the race, where you're trying to get further and further ahead of that second place runner. And it looks like Caroline Bjerkley Gravel has put this race to bed. She's done it in the hardest fashion. She's had to do it on her own. We thought Yasmin Chan might come in, might get that fifth consecutive title at the senior European cross-country title, but it's not going to be the day for Chan. For the first time since 2015, we're going to have a name that's not Yasmin Chan on the Roll of Honour at the European cross-country. And it is a woman who won the under-20 title back in 2009. It's a woman who won four consecutive bronze medals between 2015 and 2018. It's a woman who upgraded to silver at the 2019 Spar European Cross Country Championships on the hills of Lisbon. And here in Fingal, Dublin, Caroline Bjerkeli Grovdal of Norway, the 31 year old star, is going to get her just reward for her persistence, her bravery, her class, her courage. Caroline Bjerkeli Grovdal is the senior women's champion at the Spar European Cross Country Championships. Looking back to second, it is Bata, brave in defeat, and it is a well-earned silver for the Swede. And Alina Ray came through brilliantly for the bronze. And Jess Judd with fourth, performance that would probably deserve a medal, but it's Ray who gets it today. Under 23 gold turns to senior bronze for her. And Jess Judd, what a performance by her. That's what you expect to see at the end of a cross-country race, not uh, Jakob Ingebrigtsen uh, strolling around. But what fantastic for Carolina Grovdale to get a, a gold medal on the women's side to match Jakob Ingebrigtsen's gold. But I think hers is perhaps even more special when you look at her journey through the years. I think her worst ever finish at European Cross-Country Championships is fifth, but it took her nine shots to get this senior gold medal, and that is very well deserved. I think when... Desiree Linden won the Boston Marathon. She uttered the immortal line, keep showing up. And if there's an athlete at the Spar European Cross Country Championships who keeps showing up, then it is Caroline Bjerkley Gravdell. As you see, Fanula McCormack comes up to the line here. And I think she is in, is it ninth position? 
ninth position for Fanua McCormack. What a run. Seven days after running a 223.58 marathon, the two-time former champion Fanula McCormack cracks the top ten here on home turf and a huge crowd cheer from the crowd goes up. Well done. We'll check in on the team standings here. But three British athletes in the top 11, and I think we know that's always good enough for gold. That was Jessica Gibbon there. Great run to get herself into that final scoring spot. Abby Donnelly coming in in 12th place. But Carolina Grovdale will really enjoy this moment. She's waited long and hard. She would have had to watch lots of other competitors take that gold medal when she would have she would have trained in the autumn hoping for it. But 2021 in Fingal Dublin was Caroline Grovdale's year. This will be maybe the first of many. I'm sure she'll come back and try and defend this title. Absolutely. Well, when it's impossible for you to finish any worse than fifth, I, I keep showing up as well because you're going to get a medal. But she's finally got the gold one, the one she always wanted, converting that under-20 success back in 2009. Twelve years later, it turns to gold for a historic day for Norway at the Spar European Cross Country Championships. Double victory, senior men's victory, senior women's victory. See how much of a toll is taken on so many athletes. I see Yip Vastenberg there in the Netherlands on the ground, sprawled out. At least giving it their absolute everything. And great run there by Fanula McCormick. It's a ninth place a week after a marathon. That is uh, really special. And uh, some good packing there from the Irish team. Wouldn't it be phenomenal if uh, she was rewarded with a team medal? committing to coming back and doing this race for a country that's that soon after a marathon um, it'd be wonderful if that did result in a team medal for the home team yeah we'll keep it keep a close eye on that it certainly sets a new precedent for Nuala McCormick I mean she's a rare athlete in terms of her toughness she's been renowned for that over the years but given she has now done this and we mentioned about Dina Castor and the other examples of people who've tried it but Fanula McCormick to run a 223 marathon last Sunday in Valencia seven days later to come out in here and finishing a top 10 of the European senior cross country I think it's it means that a lot of athletes Hannah, are not going to have excuses anymore well we saw quite a quick turnaround from the Olympic marathon to the London marathon this year which was seven eight weeks something like that and everyone was ooing and ahhing about that but here yeah that was nothing <laughs> nothing for, for Nuna McCormack you don't need eight weeks you need one and I hope she has a well-earned rest for herself over Christmas, puts the feet up, gets the mince pies out, whatever she's got planned. I hope she takes a well-earned rest from the Olympics to the Valencia Marathon to a home championship. It's been an amazing few months for Fanula McCormack. So it's tot up and we see the results are in and the champions are Great Britain and Northern Ireland. As we said, three in the top 11, 25 points. They take victory. Germany are second, four points behind. They take the silver and it is Sweden with that brilliant performances from Merv Bata leading them. They take the bronze. Ireland just denied their 47 points. Ireland sort of nine points off the bronze, but good going by them. Nonetheless, led a course by Fanula McCormack in ninth. So we'll recap the historic way that Carolina Björkley Gravdal finally won her first senior cross country title. We thought for so many years that she'd be able to do it. And Hannah, she went about it the hard way, but ultimately the patient way. It was a really well-measured run. She stayed out of trouble in those first couple of laps. And I think we've just missed Yasmin Chan dropping off and Cluster Halfen dropping off. But for me, Grovdale was behind a lot of that. She piled on the pressure. She made Merif Barter work hard for every step of it. And ultimately just had a lot more strength than that last half mile and could just pull away and enjoy that victory. And that'll be a very popular victory. There'll be a lot of um, fans and athlete over the year, athletes over the years that have watched Caroline Grovdale compete over and over again. Uh, and like you say, she's kept turning up and that's the kind of performance you want to see from someone that commits themselves to this championships.